I'm Tzvia Neve, uh, CEO of Applied Nanotech in Austin, Texas. Okay, so we were talking yesterday that the United States is suffering from uh, lack of people going into the sciences? Yes. So you now have to go around the world to find talent that you need, is that right? No doubt about it. So what's the problem? Uh, the problem started, uh, there are two, two, two kind of problems. Uh, the, 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 the first problem is the, the fact that many of our talented young people don't have the right background in mathematics and science in the high school. The pool of people coming to the colleges from high school with the, the desire to study science and technology is going down all the time. And as a result of that, uh, we have less and less graduates of it that I will be interested to hire. And the other point is that I believe that immigration rules start to be against allowing companies to bring the talent that they need from overseas. Uh, these limitations are wrong. And uh, I believe that uh, if we don't educate our people properly, if we don't give them uh, uh, the, the, the instinct to go to science and technology and, and the, the, the right good jobs that are paid very well, then we should be allowed to bring this talent from overseas. Okay, let me challenge you on that. Are these science jobs really paid well compared to, let's say, the marketing jobs? Very good point. And uh, I, I like to talk a little about that because as all the Americans suffer, uh, my 401k suffered uh, seriously. I'm at an age that I should think about retirement. And uh, I started to think in a logic way why this happened. And I, I have my theory. And the theory is related to lack of people in science and technology that can be hired because all these people, for financial reasons, moved toward the financial districts. You mean all the people who would have gone into math and science? Exactly. So who are the people that really are good in science and technology? All these people are very creative. Uh, it's not a miracle that Einstein played violin. He was violin player as well as a very good scientist because he was creative. All the scientists and, and engineers are very creative people. So what we did, we took the creative people in science and technology where without creativity you cannot succeed, move them to the financial district that creativity can be a disaster. So what these people did, they created new financial tools. Because this is what they know what to do, because they are creative. As a result, the results, the results are clearly on the market today. So, so how do we encourage people to go into math and science? By keeping the industry here, the high-tech industry. In the last 20 years, and I can give you example over example, Industries, high-tech industries disappear. No one makes liquid crystal televisions in this country. No one knows how to make liquid crystal TVs on the market. No one knows how to handle glass. No one knows how to make interconnects that connect to the glass. No one knows how to... Basically, by desindustrialization that we did in the last 20 years, we basically throw out all the high-tech industry that needs this kind of people and this research. By taking industry out, you also kill the desire to do research. You also kill the desire to educate yourself for this type of jobs because they don't exist. You, you know, it, it's interesting you say that. I was talking to Stanford Hovshinsky yesterday. I asked him, well, how'd you get started? He goes, you know, he grew up in the machine shops in Ohio, right? He loves making machines. Well, there's no place to do that. I mean, the only shops left really are programming labs. Exactly. And the result, you, you answer your question. If there are not shops that can attract creative people to work there and enjoy a good, a good, a good living, there will not be scientists that will continue to develop, develop science and technology for these people. It's a chain. And Stan Ofshinsky is right. He, he, he was... He was a, a in a mechanical shop, and, but he had a very creative mind, and he started to think how to do things differently and better. 
So if Stan Ofshinsky was an accountant, because this was the best, uh, best position at the time to, to, to make a living, we didn't have Stan Ofshinsky, the inventor of today. We need to have a policy of keeping high-tech industries in this country because we already have a lot of holes in the chain, food chain, of high-tech industries. You, you, you know, I think people hearing that argument say, what do, you, what do you mean? We've got all these programmers. That's high-tech. Programmers are high-tech, but programmers cannot make an avionic liquid crystal display for our F-22. Who will make this? It's no one in this country that can make today a display for our fighters in this country. So if for some reason we have a conflict with the Far East, we will not be able to fly our aeroplanes. So, but, but we essentially outsource this for cheap labor. I mean, that, that's why we don't have manufacturing. Is that right, or is there another reason? Oh, we say that United States, and I believe the United States is so good in automation. In So how can we say that we are so good in automation from one hand and throwing out industries that are based on automation and robotics? Take the LCD TV. If you go to a factory like Sharp Corporation, you'll see that there's no people inside. So you cannot say it's cheap labor because no labor. It's only investments, smart investments, and we don't want to do it. Patient investment. We don't have this culture. So part of it is the culture of quarterly earning, the demand for quarterly, quarterly earnings. You said that. I didn't say that. But the answer is yes. <laughs>